I have an old cliche that I say all the time, everywhere I go, and it's this. Good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. Let's hear it. Good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. Let's hear it again. Good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. Why do I say that? Because I want my mind to keep hearing that. And then it begins to demonstrate that back to you. You see, it's not only a matter of what the world says to you, it's a matter of what do I say to myself about myself. That's a good question to write down. Repeat it after me. What do I say to myself about myself? That's very important. You need to write that down and, and you need to go over these questions in the privacy of your own home, of your own mind. You gotta constantly be about the Father's business. All right, now I wanna say something about prosperity in terms of definition. Turn now quickly to page 37. Page 37. Well, it looks like I'll have to read it for you again. <laughs> Until you get out to the break. Let me hear you say prosperity. Prosperity. Doesn't it sound lovely? Yes. I mean, the very word, I love it. Prosperity. Prosperity. Now on page 37. And before I read this, let me give you my definition of prosperity. And all of these definitions are inclusive. To me, prosperity is total well-being. Prosperity is total well-being. Say that. Prosperity is total well-being. Say it again. Prosperity is total well-being. In some of the TV and press interviews that I did over the past couple of days. Why, I didn't know that the press would catch up with me and the media would catch up with me like this. Did you see that front page, first page today? Interesting. Well, go ahead and clap then. Don't patty cake, go ahead and do it. But the media kept asking me, was all of this greed? <laughs> Well, I don't know, who knows? Maybe it is positive greed. <laughs> some people ask the question from time to time, Reverend Ike, is it right for some people to have so much while others have so little? Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, that's your choice. <laughs> don't criticize me for what I choose. I choose to be abundant. And, you know, they used to say to me, well, why, why do you have so many Rolls Royces? I said, well, they're making them. Somebody's got to have them. <laughs> Maybe one of the reasons I have so many is because you didn't choose to have one. <laughs> but even so, you know, whatever we choose, the universe will produce. So everybody is under the verdict of his own choice. And so I don't see it as greed, but I will put in this disclaimer, and I said this as they interviewed me out there, I think it was Channel 9. When it comes to material money and material things, we do not serve these things. These things serve me or us. And as long as you can keep that balance, it is just fine. You see, money is a wonderful servant, but a terrible master. And you see, and I'm striking a chord with some of you that can't quite handle money yet. You say, uh-huh, that's what I always thought. <laughs> Do you know why it is a lot of people have problems with money? A lot of people are afraid of money. Write that question on your notes for you to deal with. Am I afraid of money? I want you to examine yourself, y'all, because some of you are but we're gonna cast out that demon of fear of money before we leave here tonight. I tell about this 
almost every time I do a seminar. In Boston, many years ago, when I was a more flamboyant evangelist doing... <laughs> doing the healing and blessing meetings, a 75-year-old lady, Pentecostal pastor evangelist, came to my meeting one Sunday night. This dear lady, minister, was really afraid to even pray for what she wanted. She was afraid it would come between her and God. But that one daring moment, I helped her to break loose. And she said, I really want my own house. She gave the money, went home, went to bed. Before she got out of bed the next morning, the head of the trustee board called her. They called her mother they, she, and said to her, Mother, there's a new housing development in the suburbs here. Beautiful houses. And I and the trustees had an informal meeting and we were talking to the members and we have decided that we're going to buy your brand new house in that new development and we want you to get up, we're going to come and get you and take you out there and let you pick the one that you want. Before sundown that very day, the next day after the night when she risked praying for what she wanted, after many years of suffering without it, before the sun went down she had her own house and invited me out there. I used to go out to see her when I was stationed in Boston back in the 60s. And I remember the first time I went out to visit and to have dinner with her in a new house. When we drove up, there was a brand new elect Buick Electric 225 sitting up in the driveway. <laughs> and you know how I can be. I walked in and I started teasing. I walked over and I kissed her and I said, Mother, I said, are you enjoying this beautiful house? Is this beautiful house coming between you and God? She said, no, son. I can serve God a lot better in my own house. You know, people say to me, Reverend Ike, all the stuff that you've got, does it come between you and God? I said, no, do you realize how, how well you can praise God sitting in the back of a Rolls Royce Phantom 5? <laughs> I sit in the back of one of those Phantom 5s going down the road, just praising God. Oh, how I love Jesus. <laughs> Well, anyway, let's go back to the lady pastor's house. I said, Mother, I saw a brand new Buick 225 sitting in a driveway out there. I says, whose is that? She said, well, son, when you taught me how to ask for the house. <laughs> And I saw how fast that worked and that that didn't come between me and God. I said, well, God, while you're giving me the house, it's got a carport. Give me something to put under.